Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to do the covers, the spines, and the bindings for the Paper Dream mini album templates. This will work for every single album that's in here. So I will reference this video um, every time I make an album in this series. So this will work for every album. So the way you want to start, obviously, is you want to do your pages first. So that will determine um, how many um, pages you're going to have in your album. So that will determine what size binding you're going to need, what all of that, what size spine and everything. So I had made these three pages, and this is the six by six size. I had made these three pages. So what? Uh, one thing I know for sure is that I'm going to be using this cover, which is page. Um, oh, not this, <laughs> not this page. <laughs> but on this page, it says my cover is on page 40. So I know that for sure because that's the right size for this album. Well, hang on just a minute. That's the right size for this album, so I will be using page 40, and then um, I did three pages. So the uh, bindings for this 6x6 album is on page uh, 46, yes. So this is the page I'm going to be using. The reason I'm picking the half an inch binding strips is because if you look here, there, you know, this is pretty chunky already. So I'm going to need that space in between. So since I've decided that I'm using three pages and a half an inch, I printed this out onto the corresponding, you know, the grain um, that I use for the base of the pages. So the spine pieces are on page. 43 and 45 for the 6x6 six six album. So what I'm looking for is the one that says three pages and a half an inch for the spine piece. So this is the three page half an inch spine piece right here. I wrote it on there. It's for the A album and it's also for the portrait of the B album. So I need this template and then I need um, whoa whoops what's going on and then I need page 40's template so I'm gonna go ahead and remove both of those so if you're making um, a different size like you're doing let's say you did five pages and you made them real thin you would use a different spine but that's how you choose which spine piece to use and which binding you want to use um, and you would do that for each album and on each album it'll tell you which where those you know items are located in your book. All right, so let's start with doing the covers and the spine, and we'll get back to those binding pieces. So what you want to do is, after you've picked your corresponding um, templates, you need to get yourself a cover material. I'm going to use recycled paper pad, the backs of the paper pads. I'm going to use two of them because this is pretty big. I don't know, I might not need, yeah, I'm going to need two of them because it's pretty big. So what you want to do is lay your album cover down and trace it out. You want to do it twice because you need a front and a back. Make sure I'm staying in frame here. So then I'm also going to take my spine piece here and I'm going to lay it right next to it because it's the exact same height as the cover and I'm going to go ahead and trace it out. So when I cut it out, um, I'll know it'll be even. So then I'm going to take this off and I'm going to put it on this one. Oops. Trace it out. Okay, I'm going to put these templates back up. I'm going to take this blue uh, cover sheet off and I'll be right back. Alright, so now what you're going to need is your cutting mat, a ruler, and I'm going to use a, um, uh, what's this called? Like a box cutter? Good grief instead of my craft knife. Um, the craft knife will work just as well too, but I find that when I'm cutting chipboard, it dulls it pretty quick. So I'm just gonna use this heavy duty um, box cutter. I guess that's what it's called. 
I don't know. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the piece that has um, that has the what's jigger on it the um, <laughs> the spine piece. My brain is just not functioning well today. Okay, I'm just going to line it up and I'm going to make several passes. You don't want to push too terribly hard and that just makes it harder for it to drag through. It just like tears it up a little bit. So you just want to gently make several passes and each time you go in, you know, it goes a little bit deeper until you cut through. Now granted, this the back of this pad is pretty thick. It's thicker than your typical um, than your typical chipboard, so it's pretty thick. So, anyways, nice clean cut. So I'm gonna cut the end off, and then I'm gonna cut down the side here. This way, I ensure that they're the exact same height. And you can use whatever material you want. You can use cereal boxes. You can double them up. Um, you can use chipboard, you can use corrugated cardboard, you can use anything you want for this. So I'm going to set those aside and then I'm going to separate the two. I'm going to go right on that pencil line. Just like that. Alright, and then I'm going to cut this one out and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got all three pieces cut and ready to go. So I'm going to put the spine piece for to the side for now. And then what I'm typically, I got two sheets of 8.5 by 11 that I used my base. This is my base color. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, this is how I typically add my cardstock to my chipboard. Um, I usually take my score tape and run it along the edges. Like so. Just like that. Do that and then uh, remove the backing first. And then I take a liquid glue. Um, I'm going to use Fiber Tac by Beacon. And you can use whatever you want, whatever you have. This is just my favorite. Let me get it to come down here. And I'm just going to get some glue all over the rest of the exposed chipboard. I find this is the best way to do it. It, it covers more ground, you know. And you don't have to use as much glue, believe it or not. Okay. That's plenty. And then I'm going to take, um, this is not the exact same size, it's not a perfect square. So it is about seven inches one way and then this way it is seven and a quarter. So this is the way, the seven and a quarter is the way that you want it to be orientated. So this will be the spine and this will be the open part of the book, right? So then what you want to do is you want to line it up on one edge of your paper. Let's see, how, what would be the best way to do this? I'm going to do it this way. So you want to line it up onto the one of the edges because you, you don't have to cover all four edges. And I didn't actually get it perfectly centered in there, but that's okay. <clears throat> then you just want to press it down, flip it over, and I'm going to grab my Teflon foam folder and I'm just going to really push down so that it gets a nice good seal. 
just like that, okay? So then what you want to do is, you don't have to do this so precise. I'm just going to take my ruler and I'm going to leave about, uh, I don't know, let's do three-fourths of an inch on this side. I'm gonna grab my knife out. And I'm just going to cut a straight line. I don't know if it went straight or not, but... Right? And then what you do next is you want to tab your corners. You can just literally cut a diagonal and just leave about an eighth of an inch on the corner there. I have a special tool that I used when I was making custom work to make these perfect. Um, but when I'm doing scrapbooks and stuff just for myself, I don't usually, you know, I'm usually not that um, perfect about it. So you tab those two corners and then you want to take your bone folder and this just helps you fold it over. You just want to go ahead and run it along the side there. Just like that. And then you want to stand it up and fold it on that uh, score mark that you made. And then you want to run your bone folder again along the edge of that chipboard. So what you end up having is two score marks. You probably can't see it very well. Um, and that just really just helps you when you fold your paper over it just helps make it nice and neat and tidy so it just gives a nice um, edge there so I'm going to do that to the other two just like that so now I'm going to take that same score tape and I'm going to run it along the edge here so when I fold it over it'll be good and snug Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the, te the backing from all of these. And then before I close it up, I want to take my tape runner and just go over that corner, um, go over the corner of the chipboard and of the two pieces because I really want that to get stuck down. I don't want it to be like loose. And then I'm also going to go along the edge of the chipboard. Sometimes I do this with li liquid glue. Um, sometimes I use my tape runner. It just, just really depends on my mood, I guess. And I like to leave the end piece for last. So I like to fold over each side like that. And give it a good burnish and fold over the other side and give it a good burnish. And then I like to take the tip of my bone folder and like crease in those little bits in the corner so that it folds nicely just like that you probably can't see that either but then you want to fold that one over just like that so then you have the perfect corner on your scrapbook right perfect corner beautiful Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do my other cover, and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got both my covers covered. <laughs> covered covers. Okay. So the next thing you want to next thing next thing you want to do is uh, your spine piece. You need another piece of eight and a half by eleven. And what I'm going to do to make it easier on myself is I am going to uh, mark off one inch from the edge here. I'm just going to line my ruler up with the edge of the page there, and I'm just going to draw a line one inch, okay? So then I'm going to take my spine piece, and I'm going to do the same thing with the score tape and the glue. I'm going to cover all the edges. Just like that. And then I'm going to remove the backing. And 
and add my glue. You could cover the whole thing with score tape too if you wanted to, by the way. So then all I have to do is take my piece here, my spine, and I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to hold it up on the edge there. I'm just going to eyeball it, center it from top to bottom as best I can. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to line it up with that pencil mark that I made, and I'm going to press it down. And then I'm going to put some firm pressure on it, flip it over, do the same thing. All right. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out an inch on this side and I'm going to cut it. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to be covered up with your paper anyway. So right, so there we go. We've got this piece. Let me flip it over and make sure it's good and down. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is you want to take your score tape and you want to run it along this edge like that. And then you want to run it along this edge like that. Right? And so for the covers, you know how we left this raw edge? You want to flip that over. And then you want to run score tape along that raw edge, edge, <laughs> that raw edge, edge. Oh. Right? So you want to do that. And then you want to remove the tape from one cover and from one side of your, your spine piece here. Okay, so then you just go and you, you want to leave yourself a good gap. You want the paper to be able to bend easily without tearing. Um, so, I mean, usually they say a double of your whatever cover material, um, but I just like to eyeball it. And then you want to try to get it even. Sometimes I really stink at this part, getting it even, top and bottom. I have to try to get up over it. Yeah, it's good enough. So I'm leaving about a little over an eighth of an inch gap. And then I'm just gonna press and flip it over and burnish it down. Okay, whoa, there we go. <laughs> so now I've got one side stuck down and so I'm gonna repeat the process on the other side. So now both covers are attached and you see how it bends very nicely without tearing anything. So now what you want to do is I'm finding my score tape. You want to, you, you've got you've got to stay away from those gaps, right? So what you want to do is you want to put your score tape on and not, I'll show you, and skip where the gaps are. So this is kind of an eyeballing thing. Oh, well, I guess unless you marked it, you know, then it's probably easier to see. So you want to skip those um, spaces because you don't want the glue, the tape to get in the little crevice there. Okay, then you also want to repeat that on your cover and your spine. So. So you'll have something that looks like that, okay? 
Then you also want to, too, is you want to go ahead and run your bone folder on the side there and then tip it up on its side and run it again. And then you want to remove all that all that backing from there. And then you want to fold it down. Just really good. And you repeat that over here on this side. All right, now that that part's done, both sides have been folded over, then you just want to gently close your covers. So, um, I like to take my bone folder and just kind of crisp up those marks, or those marks, those folds. It just makes it really nice and clean looking. Flip it over and do the same for this side. And sometimes it depends on what paper you are using, whether or not you get any cracking or anything. So just pay attention to that, because um, that does matter. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is you want to cover your spine piece. So how to do that, or how I like to do that, is um, measure the piece that I originally cut. And in this case, um, it's about four inches wide. And then you want to cut a piece that's a four inch wide strip. So I'm just, since I got my, um, since I got my cutting mat and my stuff out, I'm just going to use this instead of grabbing my paper trimmer. I'm just going to go ahead and cut that down to four inches. And then what you want is you want to get your template back out, but this time all you want is the, you want to take the base template off, but you want the secondary mat. So this is how you're going to determine how high your spine piece needs to be. So I'm just going to go ahead and lay this down on here and line up top and side there. And then I'm going to just trace it right here. And I'm just going to cut it. So now you should have the perfect piece to cover your spine up. This should make, oh, I didn't trim it very well. Good grief. Even if it's not perfect, I didn't trim the original spine piece up very well, but that's okay. Even if it's not 100% perfect, um, you're basically just covering up the spine and the raw edges with this piece. So all you want to do is you, you can put glue all the way around this one because it's, there's, you know, not a gap. You know, you don't have to worry about getting in that gap. I don't think. No, you don't have to worry about it. So then you just want to put tape all around the, the cardstock that you cut. Like this. And then you want to put it on your spine pieces. You just need to be careful not to go all the way to the edge. So I'm going to put it on this side, like this, and I'm leaving a pretty good amount there that I'm not going to, that way I know for sure it's not going to be sticking out. Put it on each one of these edges, like this. And then if you have bigger tape, I suggest you use it for that part. I have a one inch uh, score tape here. Since I have it, I'm going to use it. You don't have to cover the entire thing, but this is the part that's, you know, it's going to take the most abuse because you're going to be adding your binding to this uh, section. So you want to make sure that it stays on good and, good and tight. Okay. So then you just want to burnish that down real good. And then you want to take all your tape off, or all the backing of your tape off. <laughs> I say that wrong every time. And 
And then you also want to take the tape off of here. The tape, see? The backing of the tape off of this piece. All right. And then you just want to carefully place it down, trying to um, center it top to bottom, just like that. And then you want to give it a good burnish. And then you also want to get, you kind of want to burnish in the middle of that, where that crease is, where it folds. You just want to gently start folding it and running your uh, bone folder back and forth just so it makes a really nice um, fold. Okay, so then it should fold just nicely and then you kind of want to do a little wiggle wiggle. Not too much, just a little wiggle wiggle, just to get it loosened up a little bit. And there is that. That's done. Woo -woo. All right. So we need to cover these two pieces. So what I'm going to do is get two pieces of black cardstock, and I'm going to take that same template, and I'm going to use the secondary mat because. In this book, remember my pages are the base colors, that green, and then it's got that black secondary color. So I'm going to take this and lay it down on my black cardstock. This is Recollections cardstock, by the way. Let me move that so I can see the edge. And I'm going to trace it out. just like that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, instead of tracing it on both, let me move this. I'm going to, I'm going to cut them out at the same time. Get my, whoa! Uh-oh. There we go. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to carefully whoop, make sure they're even. And then I'm going to cut just inside that pencil line. Just inside. Perfect. And I'm going to straighten them back up. Cut just inside that pencil line. Perfect. So now what I have is two mats that will fit perfectly inside this cover. And the reason I left this green is because the binding is going to go there and the um, binding is green so I didn't want it to be too, you know, too much difference. Plus it looks really nice. So I'm also going to cut two more of these for the front cover but um, I wanted to show you how I attach it down. Watch this is just like spectacular I know. <laughs> I'm just going to take my tape runner to attach this part down like that and then I'm going to take a glue stick because I wanted to show you that you don't have to use liquid glue if you don't want to but I'm taking a Yoohoo stick it's really strong this stuff is like super awesome I get this at my local art store and I'm going to cover the whole inside of this with this glue stick and then I'm going to carefully do my eighth of an inch all the way around, hopefully. Pretty good. And stick it down. Whoa. Okay, so I'm going to cut two more and I'm going to attach all four of them down and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so now I've got my front, inside, and back. Uh, matted with the black cardstock. But the only thing I didn't include in the printable template was a mat for the spines. So I wanted to show you um, how I ended up figuring out how to mat the spine. Okay, so I took my black cardstock and I took my secondary cover mat and I laid it down and I traced it out for the height. Okay, so now what I want to do is 
obviously, you know, I need to figure out the width now. So I'm going to take that same spine piece and I'm just going to lay it on here. It's going to be taller than the piece I just cut. So I'm going to lay it on here like that. I'm going to trace the edge. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut inside um, that pencil line. So I'm just going to, let's see, do I want to do it this way so I can see? Yeah. So let's see, I don't really want to, I'm going to just do maybe an eighth of an inch maybe. Whoops. Yeah. I just want to do maybe an eighth of an inch to start just to see if that will work. Okay, so here's my spine piece. So there's, there's what I cut just inside. Can you see that? That an eighth of an inch inside of that pencil mark. So let's see if that works. Let me hold it up like this. Let's see if that gave me what I needed it. Yes. So that's perfect. That's what, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm going to attach that down the same way with my tape runner. And my Yoohoo stick, glue stick. And I'm gonna hold it up like this because I'm gonna try to, maybe not, maybe I better hold it like this. I wanna give it, get it even, you know? I'm afraid I'm not gonna. <laughs> Since I can't get my head over top of it, all right, I'm just going to best guess here. That's all I can do, right? Okay. I hope that's good. It's good enough. Perfect. Okay. All right, so now the whole cover is done. Well, the whole thing is matted, I guess. And then um, I'm going to ink the edges, all the edges, front and back or inside and out, front and back, all of that. So, all right, so next up I'm gonna show you how to do the binding. Okay, so here's the binding strips and I've got three pages that have already pre-made and I've chosen the half an inch binding strip. So I want, let me use my marker so you can see, three, I need three hinges or, or flaps or whatever you wanna call them. So there's one. A page will go on to that one, a page will go on to that one, and a page will go on to that one. Okay, so this is the line that I need to cut at. This one right here. So what will happen is this part right here will be attached to the spine, right? And then this part right here will be attached to the spine. So those two pieces will be attached to the spine, and then tape will be put here and tape will be put here. No, it won't, no, it won't. Scratch that. <laughs> no, it won't. If I was doing four pages, tape would be put there. But tape will be put here, and then these two pieces will be on the spine. So this piece and this piece will be together. They will be sandwiched together. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out. So I like to just cut the whole thing out um, together and then trim it down to the size that I need. So I'm gonna, um, to the amount of pages that I need. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, I need to get used to using this paper trimmer. Good grief. I'm not, um, I'm not trimming exactly where I need to. Learning curve on this paper trimmer. <laughs> there is one. So be aware, people. Don't feel so bad if you cut terribly like me. Okay. All right, so I've got all that cut out. So like I said, I need three pages. So one, two, three. So I'm gonna cut down that line. Just like that. And then I'm gonna put this in my workbook so I don't lose it. Okay, so now you can do this two ways. One, you can go ahead and, let me find some scissors and cut those little tabs off right now if you want to. Just 
just like that. Or you can go ahead and take it to your scoreboard. I've got avalanche over here. Take it to your scoreboard and go ahead and score down all of those lines. And if you didn't want to use these lines, it's just a half an inch, half an inch, half an inch, half an inch. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. So I've scored down all of those, right? So then what you can do is when you you want to like go ahead and prep, go ahead and fold them all. You can do it all one way right now. So where you see that there is an, a triangle that you need to cut, you just fold it in half and trim it. And it cuts them both at the same time. So you can do it either way. Um, I tend to do it both ways. This is probably my favorite. Let me get this out of the way. Okay, so like I said, this is going to be on the spine, and this is going to be on the spine. And then right here where it says tape, right in the middle, this is where you want to flip it back on itself, like this. Okay, so then what you end up with is a piece that is glued together and kind of looks like this, okay? So there will be three flaps. Boy, I've got my arm all situated funky. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and add tape to the places that it needs tape, which is right here. I'm just going to run one piece of tape in that part there. But then on the spine piece, um, where the spine is going to be, where it's going to be attached to the spine part, you want to go ahead and add tape to that one too right now. And I'm going to have to kind of overlap it a little bit, which kind of stinks, but that's okay. It's okay, y'all. I'll work it out when I pull the backing off. So you want to add it to that one and to this one. Just like that. If you want to um, ink, like I could have, look, the black's showing through. Oh, well. I could have um, done this the opposite way so that when I've got this in my book, you would be able to see the, um, the inked, you know, edges. So if you wanted to, you could go ahead and ink these now, like you can flip them the other way. Because all you're really going to see is, let me show you, is these edges right here, right? And then you're going to see these edges because a page will be on here but then you know when you get down to there though you'll be able to see that so I'm gonna go ahead and ink that just to show you what I'm talking about since I did it the you know since I folded it and added tape to this side where there's already you know the inked edge I wanted to show you, you can remedy that. All right, so now I'm going to take the tape off of the center one here, not the ones that are gonna be attached to the spine, and I'm gonna fold it over on itself and burnish. Okay, so now here's what the back looks like. Right? That's what the back looks like, and then here's what the front looks like. So you've got the three hinges for your pages, okay? So now you can see the inked edge, right? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and prep these a little bit better. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna attach this to our book. All right, so you want to take the tape backing off, of course. And I am going to add a little bit of the cheap glue stick just so I have a minute to move this around if need be. So then you just kind of want to 
kind of want to you want to center it side to side top to bottom so you want to give yourself a half an inch from each one of these uh, creases and then you want to um, you know center it in top and bottom so I'm just gonna take my time here oh, I hope I got that right it looks pretty good okay and then you want to give it a good push burnish it down so now you've got the hinges in here of where your pages are going to slide onto. All right. Look at there. I love it. It looks good. Fantastic. Okay. So easy, right? I think so. All right. So that's it. That's how you do your covers, your spines, and your binding pieces. Um, be sure to give me a thumbs up if you like this video and be sure to check out the other videos in the series um, and I'll see you next time. Bye!